Hey, welcome back to our final episode on how to record a demo for your bandmates. In this episode, we're going to do some guitar overdubs, but we're going to use the 12th string, the electric 12th string. So that's going to be cool. Enjoy, till next time. Well, before we go on and, and mix it just a little bit to, to make it a little to make it fit a little polish, um, I would say we have those uh, those verses. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that um, off camera, I think, off camera, yeah. yeah. And we decided to make a little something that you don't hear too often in popular music or contemporary music. <laughs> Which is sad because it's an uh, an awesome sound. It's great. It's a 12 string, electric 12 string, like Rickenbacker head models, um, Gibson Fender, Harley Benton, Ibanez, everybody. Everything. Yeah, it's like. But of course, tune. Oh yeah. It's, uh, it's the thing to do. Funny thing about those 12 strings, they sound so good and so special because they actually never are exactly <laughs> in tune. So if you if you had that thing in a digital world tuned perfectly, it wouldn't lose everything that's about it. Because you have those little chorusing um, imperfections, going, imperfections on. going on and it feels like a doubled guitar already with just one performance. And um, that's quite nice. So it's a very wide, a, a very depends how you do it. Sometimes dreamy, sometimes just thick guitar sound. There we go. Maybe clean it up a little. A little. Kind of like just to have it a little different sounding. How I'm about those uh, those two pickups together? Get a little warmth in there. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little folky. That's nice. That pickup is nice. What do you think? Sure. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're gonna play with it, so maybe let's... Let's listen to it. Let's listen to it just and just like give it. it a try. Yeah, just jam around a little. That was beautiful. That's really nice. That's the kind of excitement that and, and, and love in the verse that, that really that makes you, oh, well, that's nice. The thing is, if, uh, would you want to keep it on to the pre-chorus? Because I actually felt, of course, I was unable to do it on the fly, as you might have noticed, but I actually <laughs> felt a little bit like the bass was having a major role there. And that they might kind of co collide in a way that's. Yeah, you have. You always have to decide um, who's in charge. Yeah. So if the bass is playing a melody, and um, you're doing a melody over that, and there is a singer potentially, well, that might be a little much. Uh, yeah. Except you you orchestrate that. So I would just stick with those um, those little arpeggio lines. Mm -hmm. What did you play? Like. Chords basically again, like E major. Yeah. And again, I'm not starting on the one, so it's one and. So, what I would do, we record that mm -hmm. and then um, I show you what I have in mind because we can um, pan them mm -hmm. very wide, have a little reverb on there, and then make it a rhythmic thing. While, um, with de uh, putting a delay on there. Oh, great. Let's give it a try. Maybe um, if I shall play through the pre-chorus, maybe give me the pre-chorus just for a second to right. be sure that I don't screw up again. The pre... but why the pre-chorus? 
Also, okay, we didn't. We decided that we won't do the pre-chorus, right? Or no, no. I, I, okay. I would just do the, the verse chorus. and then. Oh, yeah, the verse. Okay. The verse and, mm -hmm. and then we're done. Okay, so. getting a little. Confused you can here. you can maybe when we are planning on doing that uh, that airy thing with mm. the delay, you can just have a, a chord fade out into that. Okay, perfect. Maybe. We can cut it. Sure. Okay, let's just give it a go. Let's give it a go. We are coming. <laughs> Sorry. That's the first verse, is it? Or is it already the second? That is the... Yeah, let me finish my first problem. I actually <laughs> didn't root those inputs right, so now we are ready to go. And this is the first verse. That's no problem because we didn't we didn't want you there anyways. So Good. just cut it that. Do a little fade. Mm -hmm. Do a little fade. And now I will try to Let's just have a listen in with a dry. Yeah. Same thing in the second? Exactly. Oop. I mean, you could actually copy I and paste, copy but, it. or I could actually play it. I always... First of all, copying things, oftentimes, when you have a good player, takes longer than just doing it, actually. Doing it over again, and it feels better. Yeah. If you have one thing and you copy it, no problem. No one will notice, ever. If you have a whole session, of copied elements, everyone will notice. Yeah. Definitely. So, so we do it the old school way. Yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind. That's the Sorry. That's the. Though here we are a little bit shorter with yeah. the little interlude, if you want to call it like that. It's like just two bars. So, you ready? Yeah. All right, then we go. Just that yeah. last, last part. Yeah, sure. All right, then, then we go. There we have it. Perfect. Great. So All we right. can actually show cross cut. Yeah, we can actually do that. So. You can, either way, do this, just make it a little overlap and then hit your X button. Mm -hmm. And I believe ooh, you can even do this, just hitting the X button with two events uh, lined up side by side mm -hmm. will do an automated crossfade so that you are on the safe side, that you don't have any Popping noise or and pops and yeah. Exactly. So, Great. I think we got all tracks laid out and recorded. And thanks you ever so much for watching. Thanks, Henning. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. Um, see you on the next one. Part two will be all about the mixing. So until then, see you on Facebook and Instagram. Hit the bell icon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.